Connecting Waters is a program that the Crooked River Watershed Council launched in 07, 2007. And Stearns Dam that you see right here in the, in the background is a part of that project, part of that bigger program. And uh, there are actually 12 fish barriers that were identified in 2007. So that became the Connecting Waters program, that list of 12 projects. And the goal, of course, is to divide, uh, design and implement passage, fish passages at each one of these sites. So we've got eight of them now done. There are four left on the list. So it's Opal Springs, it's Rice Baldwin. Then there are two private diversions, one on Ochico Creek and one on Mackay Creek. We think those are probably going to be the last ones that get uh, completed and mostly it's because of the, the land ownership. Uh, they're not as, as eager at the moment to take those on. So we know that in those cases you just have to be patient. You have to let a little time go by, provide information when it's, when it's requested and, and kind of assist them in their own journey to that decision point. So we hope by 2020 to have all 12 of these done and, and therefore the Connecting Waters program for the Cricket River Watershed Council would be complete at that time. In our area, there are a number of historic irrigation structures that uh, some are in use, some are not in use. The Crooked River historically was home to steelhead primarily as the iconic species. And what we're really trying to do is reestablish those steelhead runs. And part of reestablishing the steelhead runs is ensuring that the fish can access all the habitat that's available in the river. The records indicate that a fellow named Sidney Stearns uh, first built the dam in about 1911. The dam's primary purpose was to divert irrigation water for the Stearns Ranch and farming operations. The last 50 years, um, things have sort of changed and uh, the current diversion is no longer in use. So now it becomes really just a liability because it doesn't serve any beneficial purpose. About 2007 timeframe, the council started to, in earnest, work with its partners to develop a plan. Part of that plan includes um, some assessment work before you can really do anything in the river you have to understand the dynamics uh, that the dam has created for example the dam has uh, retained and blocked a lot of sediment from upriver so that was one of the issues that we had to understand a little bit better before we could actually design the project so the watershed council is really the project central project coordinator for the Stearns dam removal but we've got many collaborating partners that have joined the effort some provide funding including uh, the national Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, and OWEB, which is the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board. It's important to understand that we couldn't do these types of projects without the money that the citizens of Oregon have set aside. Uh, back in 98, and then again in 2010, they set aside 7.5% of their state lottery revenues to fund restoration projects that help restore fish populations and restore watershed functions. The BLM is really excited about the removal of this barrier because this will provide more than 10 miles of the best habitat available in the main stem Crooked River. American Rivers has been involved with the Stern Stand removal since 2008. Uh, when they funded the engineering and design phase of the project. And the Stearns Dam is one of about 400 barrier removal projects that we funded. Uh, there are millions of dams across the country and Stearns Dam, for example, was uh, becoming a liability to the landowner. They had ongoing maintenance costs, safety concerns. So by removing it, we're doing a service not only to the river, but also to the larger community. The land is actually owned by the public. So it's owned by both you and I, everyone, and it is managed by the Bureau of Land Management for the public. So we've got people who are helping us implement, people who have helped us fund, and we also have some agencies who have helped us through the permitting process, which is really critical on these kinds of projects. Opal Springs Dam is at the bottom of the watershed, and as you work your way up, if you were an incoming fish from the ocean migrating up the river, you would encounter Opal Springs. Then the next dam, uh, we've put a ladder in, in about 2010, and that's Crooked River Central project on the Crooked River below town, below Prineville. We also have a uh, bypass channel at a structure called People's Irrigation District, and that's a little bit above the city of Prineville, actually. As you keep working upriver, about a mile below Stearns Dam is a structure called Rice Baldwin Dam. It's almost the same size as Stearns. It's about six feet tall, and we actually have plans underway right now to do the designs for a fish bypass channel at that project. 
Unlike Stearns Dam, Rice Baldwin is an active diversion site and still needs to produce water for the, the irrigated community in that section of the river. So in that sense, we've got to find a solution to the fish barrier issue, but we also have, have to find a solution that maintains the dam's function as a diversion. So in that case, a bypass, bypass channel is probably the likely option there. If you've been in the Northwest at, in any kind of time, you know that the iconic species of the Northwest are these anadromous fish that come from the ocean and magically run hundreds of miles inland to their home waters to, to repeat the, basically the reproduction cycle and start a, new, uh, a whole new population. So uh, this, this particular structure at Stearns, in the bigger context of the, of the larger Columbia Basin even, is important to help assist those species in uh, recapturing and reactivating, uh, reutilizing, you might say, all that habitat that they, uh, they really need for their full life cycle. So the steelhead in our, in our case come from hundreds of miles in the Pacific Ocean and want to come up all the way up the river. These barriers that we've talked about, Stearns, Rice Baldwin, the ones that we've already addressed, plus Opal Springs at the bottom, really preclude a lot of the habitat being used by these fish. So when we um, are successful here at Stearns and this structure is completely removed from the river, the fish will be able to uh, move in both directions above and below this site. And it will provide habitat to all kinds of aquatic species. But most notably our anadromous fish, particularly the Mid-Columbia River Summer Steelhead, which will be returning to this segment above Stearns Dam which they have historically been their habitat, but they are returning after about 80 years of not being able to access this prime habitat. So another really interesting part about reintroducing these fish in the larger basin, you know, they've been gone ever since the large projects were built down on the Deschutes River, effectively blocking their passage up into the Crooked and, and actually into the upper Deschutes as well. Well, what does that mean? That means certain nutrients are not coming back into the system. Those are nutrients that also support the web, the food web and the nutrient web inside the, the aquatic system that supports all the different fish, all the different organisms that rely on those nutrients. So we're talking about some basic building blocks of the ecosystem as it relates to the aquatic, the fish environment, all the aquatics that go with it. The dam removal is a, an interesting process because um, it's trying to undo about a, you know, in this case, over a hundred years of changes to the river. Essentially on this project we have a, it's a three phase approach. Um, the first step is getting control of the river and being able to control that water. And so in the first phase of this project, we'll be popping a hole into the, into the dam on the right side of it and lowering the reservoir. And we have to lower that reservoir in a controlled fashion so that we're able to uh, make sure that we get any fish that are in the reservoir that get stranded. And then once that reservoir is drawn down, and then we would, in this case for phase two, we will access the other side uh, across the dam uh, with a small bridge. We will take out the concrete starting from the other side and working back to this side uh, as part of phase two. And then phase three is where we take the, the temporary bridge out and regrade this channel in this bank over here to make it look more natural and stable for the long term. So at this point in the project, we've uh, installed all of our uh, large sandbags, which we call bulk bags, and we've installed uh, a silt curtain on the upstream side of the bulk bags to try and uh, isolate the work area. And what we attempt to do is uh, really minimize the amount of water that's getting into the work area, because as that water flows through, it transports uh, fine sediments in stream, which can increase the turbidity in the river. Our goal is to uh, absolutely uh, prevent any water from getting in, but while that's our goal, it's often not attainable. Behind me, you might see we have some uh, erosion prevention measures in place. We have some straw bales in stream to try and trap fine sediments as they move downstream. Right now, we're trying to dig out the notch. And the contractors are working um, on installing a temporary bridge. Uh, that's important because it allows fish passage up and downstream during the project. And it also minimizes the disturbance that we have from our construction activities uh, to the river environment. This is 
still kind of the first phase where we're trying to get control of the river and, and dewatering the reservoir. And so in this first phase, what we're doing is uh, notching the dam, creating an opening where the river can flow through that opening. We'll start removing the bulk bags upstream and allow the river to actually flow into our notch. And then it will remain flowing through the notch for the remainder of the project. There won't be a lot of Russian water while we're excavating the notch in the dam. We're gonna control that by removing sandbags slowly to keep the flows down. Once, once we get the notch complete and the fish salvaged, we'll slowly let the water flow. Everything is moving forward as, as planned and uh, trying to just do a controlled drawdown. In this case, we're just gonna draw down about a foot or two of the reservoir. And then tomorrow, the plan would be to draw the reservoir all the way down uh, and do the fish salvage. So this, this phase right now is just getting control of kind of the water and then uh, we'll be moving forward with the full drawdown tomorrow. It's a glorious day to remove a dam, isn't it? dam is is important because it opens up such beautiful habitat upstream and there's a few more barriers down below but we're getting really close to meeting the uh, goal of having this barrier free and the drawdown of the pool is, is at a rate of speed that we really like because it facilitates all the, the salvage activities that are going on so that's really important is to control that water it's the key to the deal I think I have like 60 fish. Dam removal is a big deal and uh, it's something that uh, is not always accomplished and I give kudos to the Watershed Council for getting this one done as fast as they have from when people started to talk about it a couple years ago to getting it out in that short of time is unusual with dam removal. It really is. It's good. Then long term, it's really just kind of a piece in the puzzle of getting this whole river back together. It's by itself just one of multiple things that will hopefully get done. And there's quite a bit been done in the last few years already, but more to be done. I think it was stunned by the electroshock and then seems like he's coming back to life, see? Look at that. I thought, well, what the heck? So I brought him it's back tremors. down. tremors. You know, you're a doctor, they're tremors. And I revived him. The mouth. Mouth to mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mouth to gill. Yeah, that's that's mouth that's to gill. So that tree over there where they're all at. God, gravel is perfect for a trout because he can move the, he can, uh, he, it's small enough that a trout when it lays over, uh, builds its red that uh, they can move this size rock. If it's too big, they can't move it, so it's not a good uh, spawning bed. But this is gonna be a great bed. About eight miles of this uh, river upstream is federally designated Wild and Scenic River, and it is managed by the Bureau of Land Management, Primeville District, and we take great pride in managing that river for all kinds of uses and terms of the habitat, the riparian conditions, and um, particularly recreation.
We're in basically the final stages, uh, doing the final grading of the channel um, in, in where the structure was. Uh, I think things have gone really well. Uh, overall, the, the, probably the biggest surprise is that there were no surprises. <laughs> That's always a good thing in construction. And so we're real happy to be at this point where things are wrapping up and kind of the final details are getting uh, finished up. The Watershed Council model in Oregon is an excellent uh, avenue to get restoration uh, completed on sites like this where it's locally driven and there's local ownership with the people there and it's a local local economics as well. So the, the example here on the Stearns Dam is an example that is repeatable and, and is, is best for uh, the state of Oregon in general. So Stearns Dam right here was uh, a really successful project for the Watershed Council and our partners. You know, we, we tackle these larger projects in a collaborative uh, manner. We bring and enlist help from federal, state agencies, uh, Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board, obviously a very, very big partner. We are completely pleased with the way it's turned out. I mean, you can see the banks that we've reestablished on the far side, the river now, there's no pool, but now there's a river um, leading through the site. What we've been able to effectively do in this project as part of our Connecting Waters program is, is eliminate, fully eliminate a very significant barrier in our system. This barrier was blocking access to 12 miles of some of the very best waters in the entire watershed that, that sort of come out of Bowman Dam. As it turns out, there's no bad day actually to remove a dam. All days are good days to remove a dam. If that's what's called for and that's what you can do, let's get on with it and let's get these dams out of the system.